When a judge finally cleared Sean Ellis of a remaining wrongful gun conviction last May, it was the end of a decades-long struggle for a man who'd spent 22 years in prison for a murder he did not commit, thanks to a group of corrupt Boston cops. But they're not the only dirty cops, and Ellis is not their only victim. Ellis' attorney, Rosemary Scapiccio, joined me last spring after Suffolk County DA Rachel Rollins, now U.S. attorney, called out the misconduct by the police department and the then DA's office, and then officially ended the prosecution of her client. And despite that victory, Scapiccio was calling for far more. It's the first time in 28 years that the Suffolk County District Attorney's Office uh, acknowledged that there was massive corruption in the Boston Police Department in the, uh, in the 90s. Uh, in, in the 2000s, and, and it needs to be addressed. And we're hopeful that now that this acknowledgement has been made uh, and filed with the court, that, that there will be some um, institution that looks into uh, the, any conviction that included Sarah Robinson, Brazel, Mulligan, or Detective Keeler. And so they are. Sean Ellis was famously profiled in Netflix docuseries Trial 4, but for those few who don't know his case, he was 19 when he was arrested in 93 and tried for the murder of Boston police detective John Mulligan, who was shot five times in the face and killed following a robbery. Ellis was eventually convicted of murder and first-degree robbery, sentenced to life without parole. But then in 1998, two Boston police detectives, pivotal to the case, pled guilty to corruption charges, and a third got immunity in exchange for testifying against the other two. Now, more than two decades later, that third detective, John Brazil, currently enjoying a $45,000 police pension, I should say, is under investigation as well for his role in both Ellis's false conviction and that of another man, James Lucian, who was released last month after 27 years in prison. In one of her last moves in office as DA, Rachel Rollins last week launched that investigation. I'm joined now by Sean Ellis' attorney, Rosemary Scapiccio. Scapiccio. Rosemary, it's good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Jim. How significant is what Rachel Rollins did? Uh, I think it's, it's a giant step forward in terms of holding um, bad police officers accountable. This is what we asked for after the Drumgold verdict. It's what we asked for after the Ellis verdict. Uh, it's what should be done any time that a determination is made that a police officer lied during the course of a homicide investigation. How do we trust what that officer said in other cases if, if we don't do the investigation and find out what, you know, what caused him to lie, what allowed him to lie so freely um, so that he didn't feel like he would ever get caught? But are we ever going to have an opportunity to see how expansive his lies were? My understanding from having read a Boston Globe story is the police department is fighting an effort to have his disciplinary file released, which I assume would give us some indication if Lucian and Ellis were everything or if there's much more. Well, I don't know that everything would be in the disciplinary file, Jim. I think that uh, the disciplinary file is, is basically for um, the police to investigate um, either wrongful acts of uh, breaking the rules or criminal activity. I don't know that they ever opened a file on Brazil. I've never seen it, if it exists. My apologies. I've been calling him Brazil. I didn't know it was pronounced Brazil. So how do we get beyond these two men's cases if there is beyond to be gotten? Well, I think what Rachel Rollins has done is taken a step in the right direction. I think she has acknowledged that Brazil not only lied and, and corrupted the Ellis investigation, but at the same time, nine months later, was assigned to the Lucent investigation and lied and, and hid evidence and, and had some theft going on in that case. I mean, what Judge Ullman said about Detective Brazel is that the case, that Lucent case, got overturned because he committed perjury at a murder trial. That's a pretty significant um, claim to, to, to lodge against a police department. If, if there was someone legitimate running that police department right now, don't you think they would say, wait a minute, a, a Superior Court judge has said that one of our police officers committed perjury. Let's start our own investigation into what's happening. But that's not it. It's, it's business as usual at BPD. It's let's stop the investigation. Let's not look into what happened. And let's keep our eyes forward and, and, and look on the future. And that's not going to teach us anything. We keep repeating these same mistakes over and over again that then many, many, many more Sean Ellis's and, and uh, Lucens are going to be locked up. Yeah, let me read life. specifically what Judge Allman said when, when he was speaking to the murder victim, Ryan Edwards' family, who was unhappy 
about the fact that uh, uh, Lucien was being freed, and ex what he said verbatim was, the person to blame is the lead detective in this case, Detective John Brazel. If he had been honest and had done his job correctly, uh, we would not, uh, would not be here. Can you spend 30 seconds and tell people, I should have said this earlier on, exactly what Brazel did in Sean Ellis' case that led to this investigation? Yeah. In Sean Ellis's case, Brazel lied um, and, and covered up his um, corruption with a Sarah Robinson and Mulligan, where for a period of about nine years from 1990 to 1996, they were ripping off drug dealers in the Boston area. They were keeping the money for themselves and they were putting the drugs back on the street. And they were lying about it because um, what happened when Mulligan got killed is that the defense attorneys at the time believed it had something to do with Mulligan being corrupt but no one ever told them that there was this investigation open. No one ever said that there was this corruption happening. And, and Brazel hit it forever. And then when he finally got caught, um, what he did instead of taking responsibility is he turned um, and testified against a Sarah and Robinson. So he's never, ever spent a day in jail for what he did in the Ellis case. Well, he is also was granted immunity for that testimony. Does that in any does that in any way I believe that was in a federal proceeding. Was it am I right about that? that was. Does that in yes. any way preclude criminal charges or does a statute of limitations preclude criminal a, charges in this investigation? There's a seven year statute of limitations uh, on perjury cases unless there is an ongoing criminal conspiracy to cover it up. Um, and I don't know if the DA's office has enough to suggest that there's an ongoing criminal conspiracy, but you know, what, what we should, you know, all stay, step back and pause right now is that Rachel Rollins, even though she left and she went to the U.S. Attorney's Office, you know, she fired this shot across the bow doing the absolute right thing, saying the buck stops here. Not only now do we have these two cases that are overturned because of Brazil's lies, but we have a judge saying he committed perjury in a homicide case. What are we going to do about that? And what she said she wants to do is she wants that office to continue to investigate every case that Brazil was involved in. Uh, to determine if there are other people that are sitting in jail right now for crimes they didn't commit because we can't trust what Brazel says. But by the way, that division that she created, the Integrity Review Board Bureau, which has done these investigations, its future and the Brazel investigation is now in the hands of Kevin Hayden, who's the interim DA until next year's election. Is there any indication either way as to how his, what his predilection is here, what his intention is? I have not spoken to him, so I don't know directly. Uh, I'm hopeful that that all of the work that the Conviction Integrity Unit has done uh, with David Lewis at its, at its helm uh, will continue because it's freed a lot of people. It's opened the door to people who were wrongfully convicted. And that was, you know, by Rachel Rollins doing and by David Lewis's investigation. So this wasn't just a situation where someone rang a bell and said, we don't think that they got a fair trial. That Conviction Integrity Unit looked at everything. They looked at transfer, transfers, they interviewed witnesses. They did everything they were supposed to do before they came to the conclusion that these individuals didn't get a fair trial. And when you see, keep seeing the same names coming up over and over again on these, on these motions for a new trial, at some point you have to stop and say, what is going on here? How are they getting away with it? And why are we continuing to believe them in the cases that have led to convictions? You just said you know, there are a number of cases. The Globe reported that there were nine uh, people released who had spent at least 20 years in jail as a result of police or prosecutorial misconduct. Virtually all of the nine men were black. Uh, uh, and uh, is there any indication or should there be an indication that this is just the opening salvo, meaning if it turns out that Brazel is being investigated for his misbehavior, his misconduct here, his criminal misconduct potentially, is there any reason there shouldn't be cops or prosecutors investigated in these other cases as well? In my opinion, absolutely not. It should be open to a full investigation, just like well, I've said before, when there is a when there's a plane that crashes, the NTSB comes in, they find the black box, they do an investigation, and they do it so that they can maintain the integrity of the airlines. Why aren't we looking to maintain the integrity of the criminal justice system? Why aren't we looking at the Boston police and saying there was a problem here, and it's repeating itself over and over and over again? And we should not leave it to these defense attorneys and these and these defendants to pick these these cases off one at a time. We should, as as an institution be investigating any cases that these cops were involved in to determine whether or not their lies 
contributed to other wrongful convictions. Well, hopefully uh, her interim successor, Mr. Hayden, and the mayor agree with what you just said. Rosemary Scapiccio, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time.